Hello. <coughs> Just shutting that door because it glares a bit. Welcome to Wednesday's class. Hi, Adelia. <laughs> um, right. Today we're going to talk about bones. I know I've talked about it before, but it was a long, long time in the ago in the in the, in the dim and distant past in the first lockdown. So and you, you could never talk too much about bones because without them we just sort of collapse onto the floor. I think most people have heard of osteoporosis, um, and one of the best ways to avoid osteoporosis is to do weights bearing exercise but then you think well what does that mean well any just standing up that's why one of the reasons that when um we do the classes i say if you can stand up do because it helps your balance but it also helps your bones because you're weight bearing um another way to help the weight bearing is to strengthen your muscles and that takes us to my bugbear or my, my bee in my bonnet is muscle wastage, the sarcopenia, the way that our muscles waste away if we don't use them. And um, the government guidelines, I'm sure you know by now, are about 30 minutes exercise, vigor, um, moderate exercise each day. So that's walking uh, that makes you a bit puffed out. And you can do it in 10 minute chunks, plus two, at least two strengthening sessions a week. Now this one would class would count as one of your strengthening sessions. So if you repeated this again, you'd be getting enough exercise. Uh, I mean, I say to people about exercise sometimes, pre-lockdown, people used to say, well, I dance, but you don't dance every day. You don't dance all the time. You need to, when you're doing particularly strengthening exercises, you need to do it consciously and uh, at least twice a week. Or if you're going to do the bite-sized strengths that I was showing you on Monday, you need to do it every day. Uh, now, if you have strong, when you use a muscle, when you do that, it pulls on the bone. And if your muscle is strong, the bone has to get thicker to support that muscle, and, and it pulls against the bone. You know, like how you, when you do a when you do a, an exercise with a resistance band, you're pulling against the band, so your muscle is getting stronger. It's the same thing. The bone has to get bigger to support a heavier muscle. Um, and did you know your bones are constantly renewing themselves? They've got things called osteoclasts that clear away dead bone, and osteoblasts that build new bone. It's very clever. So really, you're not the same person you were when you were born because the whole of your body has changed. I can't remember how often it changes. And here comes trouble. Oh, no, he's all right. Um, so, yes, so these classes are not only their functional fitness, but the way, that they're, the way that they help you is not only by making you more flexible, by making you stronger uh, so that you can cope with all the sort of everyday things, tasks and chores that you have to do and the fun things that you want to do as well. But it also tries to ensure that your bones st stay strong and your muscles stay strong because without bones and muscles, you're not going to get very far. Um, I mean, if anybody wants to know more about bones, in fact, the Royal Osteoporosis Society has a lot of information about how to keep your bones healthy. I mean, you can do things like if you've got bad knees, don't do this. But just jumping like this on the spot, the marching that we do, it may not feel like much, but it is it is putting stress on your bones, which makes them grow stronger. And just, I think I may have mentioned this before the last time I did a talk on bones, but I find this really interesting, that when they resurrected the Mary Rose, they could tell who were the archers from the size of their uh, humerus, this bone here, because they're pulling back the bows. And the bows, they took a tremendous amount of strength to be a longbow uh, man, longbow man, an archer, that's the word, dum de dum de dum de dum um, Yeah, they had such huge overdeveloped muscles on the right-hand side, assuming they were right-handed, um, that their their upper arm bones were bigger than the, uh, on the right, were bigger than the left. I just think that's an interesting fact, a QI fact. Right, um, it is 11 o'clock. Oh, let, let me see. Good morning, all. Sunshine, yes. Good morning. What have I missed? I had left my band downstairs. You'll have to watch it again. 
uh, Delia, to find out my fascinating talk about bones. Um, right, so welcome to the uh, Wednesday class, the functional fitness class. Um, if you're new to the class, I'm just going to tip this down a wee bit, actually. If you're new to the class, and I think there may be a couple of people that haven't done it before. Uh, what you need is a chair without any arms, and it's fairly stable, although you're not going to do a lot of leaning on the chair. And if you have one, an exercise band. If you want to know about exercise bands, look at last Wednesday's class, because I talked about bands at the beginning then. So that would be the, the 3rd of February. I explain about exercise bands in that one. If you haven't got an exercise band, just do the movements. It'll be fine. You'll still get benefit from it. Just not quite as much as you would if you, if you had the, uh, the exercise band. Um, so the uh, class is in three bits. We do a warm up, the main body of the exercise, and then we do stretching uh, and take about 45, 50 minutes, depending on how much I talk. And I do like a bit of a blether. Um, so uh let me see if you really can't stand a lot of the exercises can be done in the chair but if you can um stand it, it is better for your bones and for your balance um just generally better do the class at, well we, we'll start by doing we'll get into it we'll start by doing just gentle marching just to warm up and i'm just going to say that the, this the class is suitable for everyone because the exercises should be doable. If they're not, let me know and I'll adapt them. Um, but we, we're going to do 10 of each, 10 repetitions of each exercise. Now, if you can't do 10, that's absolutely fine. Do one, do two, however many you can do, um, and then aim to do 10. If you could do the whole class perfectly without any effort, it's not the class for you. Although you can. If you were quite fit, you could still do the class because you could just give it a bit more welly. You could have stronger bands. You could do various things like that. So it's at your own pace. So if you can, do this on your toes. But just nice and gentle. Give your arms a slightly exaggerated swing just to sort of start the muscles warming up a wee bit. Do three. Two, I've got to be gentle. I had a tooth out yesterday. One, so I had an abscess, a grumbling abscess that flares up and down. Um, and I just thought, oh, get rid. So there you go. I haven't had a tooth out since I was about 16. Hands on shoulders. You can, if you want, keep using your legs, but you don't have to. We're just going to stretch up. Just give yourself a bit of a stretch. Feel your ribs moving away from your pelvis. If you can't get your arms right up by your ears, put them there, there, wherever you, you want to put, wherever they, as far as they'll go. But what you don't do is you don't force them. Just let them go where they naturally want to go. If you can get them up here, fabulous. Put them down and push out. Bring them back in and push forward. I'm going to keep moving just because it's quite nice just to keep moving and push out and in just very gently forward and back last time stretch up and down out and in and forward and back right we're going to put put your hand on your shoulder so you make your arm like a wing and imagine that you've got a pencil sticking out of your elbow and we're going to do five great big circles backwards one two nice and slowly with full range of movement four Five and then five forward. One, two. This just gets the joint moving. Four, five. And then the other side. Don't forget your pencil sticking right out there. One, two, three, four, five. And then forward this. I'm not as dexterous with this arm, too. My circle isn't as good four, five. Right, final arm one. Those of you that are been with me know that I, I really like this one. So all it is is raising one arm and bringing the other one back at the same time. Again, if you've got limited shoulder mobility, put your arms where they will go. Don't force them and don't rock. It's only your arms that move. So you go one. We're going to do 10 of these. 
two, nice and slow and controlled, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten. Fabulous. I'm just going to dip this down just a tad. We're going to do heel digs. So you're just going to dig your heel into the into the floor. This is still the warm up. At the same time, you're going to anchor your elbows and you're going to do a bicep curl with the opposite arm. So you're doing heel digs. Ooh, look at that. I'm going. I'm going same arm and same leg. Then you're doing heel digs and bicep curls at the same time simultaneously there's no end to our talent nice and slow and controlled and this is good for your balance it's good for coordination it's good for memory because you've got to remember to do opposite arm and leg three two plus it warms you up one it's good for your joints and your muscles next we're just going to take a step to the side just tip Tip your toe there, and you're going to have prayer hands falling over here and push out to the side. Nice and slow, just getting used to, when you do this, you're obviously, you're balancing on one leg. So the leg that's not moving, uh, the static leg, in fact, is taking all your weight just for a very short period of time. And so it's good for your balance. It's good for your strength. Remember those headlights on your knees and your pelvis and your chest pointing forward. Try not to let your knee come forward, come in. You don't need to do it very far out. Three, two, one. It's good for your knees as well because your knees are giving a little bend. You can't, you can't do this with your knees straight. I can't anyway. Right, we're just going to take a step back. And at the same time, you're just going to put your hands out. Splay your fingers. Give your poor old hands a bit of a workout as well. Again, remember those headlights on your knees and your pelvis facing forwards. Three. Again, this is good for balance. Two. One. And then the last one, you're just going to touch your toe and we're going to just swing your arm. It's a little toe tap and a swing of your arm. Opposite arm, of course, not the same arm. Three, two, one. Now we're going to put that all together. This is where the memory bit comes in. So uh, you need balance, flexibility, coordination, memory, everything for this. So we're going to do a heel dig out to the side, back, and a toe tap. Heel dig, side, back, and a toe tap. Heel dig, out to the side, back, toe tap. Heel dig, out to the side, back. One more time. Heel dig, side, back, toe tap. Right, I'm just going to do a little bit. We're going to do a little bit of shadow walking today. I'm going to put this down so as you can see, and I'm going to turn away from you so that you're going the same way as I am. So you're standing here. Imagine that your right foot and your left foot are at the bottom right and left uh, bits of a square. So you're going to take your right foot and go up to the top left hand square. Now this bit, you're going to cross it over. Now be careful. Because you may, this is this is when you're overbalanced. So be very careful. You're going to put your 
cross your foot over and put it into the other corner of the square, and then back to your original starting place. So it's right, left, back, back. Right, left, back, back. If you need to hang on to the chair, hold on to the chair, absolutely fine. You could do it like this. Right, left, back, back. So you're, you're only holding, holding on to the chair when you're doing this movement. Okay? Right, left, back, back. Right, left, and determined you won't fall. All right, one more time. We're going to do it the opposite way now. So you start with your left foot up to the right hand corner. Left, right, back, back. Left, right, back. One more time. Back. Okay, how was that? Did you manage it without? I hope you managed it without falling. Right, hopefully, I'm just going to tip it down a wee bit more. Hopefully, you're nicely warmed up now. So we're going, I don't know what's going on here. So we're going to start the main body of the exercise now. And as usual, we start with a squat. A squat, I'm sorry, for, for those of you that are regulars, just do your knitting or something. Um, a squat is not is, is sitting down without the chair. You don't have to go right down. You can go down to there. The main thing is your feet, your knees don't come forward. They don't come over your foot. If you think about how you sit, you stick your bottom out. You don't sit down like this because your bottom would miss. So if you can do a free squat, your feet are hip width apart, your knees stay pointing forward. Remember those, those headlights. And you go down that far that far, however far you can go. If you're not used to doing this, you won't be able to go down very far without having bad technique. Okay, but you need to keep your knees from going forward. If you can't do that, a free squat, and that's absolutely fine if you can't, sit in the chair at the front, knees at 90 degrees, heels, um, ankles under your knees, have your hands here so if you're not tempted to use them, and just stand up nice and slowly and sit down nice and slowly if you can't do that use your arms for momentum forward and back and if that's impossible put your hands on your knees and stand up and sit down but what we aim to do is if you're in the chair we aim for you to progress to the next level until you can do a free squat it's really important of strong thighs and strong bum muscle Right, so whether you're doing it in a chair or a free squat, we're going to do 10. I'm going to start sideways so that you can see where my knees are in relation to my feet. So we're going to go down and up. One, do what you like with your hands. Two, three, see how far out my bum is. Four, five, but keep looking forward. Don't go down and dip your head like that. Keep looking forward. Six. Keep your knees out. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Well done, whether you were in the chair or doing free standing ones. Right, I'm going to let you sit down now. So sitting in the chair, sitting at the front of the chair, straighten your legs with your feet pulled back, toes pulled back. If you don't have a band, just sit in the chair. Put your band, uh, loop your band around your uh, feet. Try and get it in the instep because that stops it pinging off and hitting you in the face. Sitting up nice and straight, have quite a bit of tension on the band, so sort it's of pulling your hands down. Stay like that, I'm going to just move this round so you can see what I'm doing with my hands. If you haven't got a band, just do these arm movements. Sitting nice and straight, you're not 
moving your, your torso doesn't rock, it's only your arms. And you pull your arms back and try and squeeze your shoulder blades together with or without the bands and then slowly return them. And pull. And two. Three. You can have quite a heavy band on this one. Four. And quite a lot of tension. Five, because you're using both your arms and it's quite you're quite strong for this one. Oh, I've lost count. We'll call that five. I think it may be six, but we'll call it five. This is six. This is really good for your back muscles. Seven. Eight. Remember, if you can't do 10 reps of anything, that's absolutely fine. Nine. It's 10. Doing even one is more beneficial than doing none and not doing the class. And if you find the class a little bit hard today, if it's your first time, don't give up. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I need this. Don't give up. Keep coming back because it does get easier. I think there are people who have been coming for quite a long time who will confirm that it does get easier. Not easier, but you can do the exercises. Right. Standing behind the chair, we're going to exercise. We're going to strengthen your, you've got three glute muscles, uh, maximus, medius, and minimus. And we're going to do the medius and minimus with this one. So we're standing here. We're just going to raise one leg to the side like that with your toe pointing forwards. Don't twist like that. It's sort of against the joint you're pulling it. Don't lean. It doesn't matter if you only get your leg to there, as long as it's being pulled up by these muscles. So do it at my speed. So that's one. Again, this is strengthening your static leg because it's having to take your whole weight. So, so it's good for your bone, bone density. Three. Four. Five. Six. It takes quite a pounding, the static leg, doesn't it? Seven, although it's not moving. Eight. Nine. Ten. Right. Give your legs a bit of a wiggle. And we're going to do the other side now. Ooh. Ready? So, remember, don't lean. Stay as upright as you can. One. Oh, I can feel it there. Two. When you bring this leg down, don't put your weight on it. Just bring it in to the other one. Three. Four. Practice a bit of balance. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Ah. Static leg is feeling it now. Nine. And last one, thank goodness. Ten. Fabulous. Right. Oh. Did you manage 10? If you didn't, it doesn't matter. Oh, hips a bit of a wiggle. Right, we're going to do a bicep curl. If you have a band, oh, the dog's about to bark because the postman's just coming up the, the drive. No. <coughs> Sorry about that. Oi, oi, stop. If you don't have a band, just do the uh, the movements with your arm. But you're going to stand on your band and have quite a bit of tension. Anchor your elbow into your waist so it's sort of there. 
And you're going to have, oops, said she, looking it through her feet. You're going to have enough tension on the band so that if you relaxed your arm, it would get pulled down. So you can hold it about there so that your bicep, this muscle here, is under constant pressure. And then we're just going to close your elbow. Your, um, your elbow bone doesn't, doesn't leave your side. You're not going up like that. The shoulder is not moving. If you're doing it without, just do that. Clench your fist and do, do the same as we're doing, but you just don't have a band. So one, just down to there. Two, three, four. Where's it gone? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wonderful. Same on the other side. So stand on your band. <laughs> Did you say you'd done them properly, Delia? Right. Other, other arm. One. Two. Three. Four. Can your daughter do squats, though, Delia? Five. Six. Seven. Eight, nine, ten. Wonderful. Right. Now we're going to do the balance one. Ah, I've been thinking about this because uh, at various times we've done the going round the clock, sort of 12, 3, 6. And then last week I did a sort of stamping one. And some people liked that and some people didn't because I was thinking um, because I, I was thinking about bone density and power and stamping is a sort of helps bone density and helps strength and speed and things. So what I've decided is do whichever suits you. Um, so we're going to engage our core. So exhale the core of these muscles here that keep you upright. Exhale, pull your navel into your backbone as hard as you can, and then re re relax it, release it slightly. And then we're going to stand on one leg. And if you can, we're going to go 12, 3, 6, and back up. If you want to, you're going 12, 3, 6, and back up. It's entirely up to you. So that's one. Ooh. Two, whoa, I'm going to have to hold on on this sometimes. Three, four, five. If you want to, you can do it this way, just to have six, just to have more points of the compass, as it were, or the clock. Seven, eight. Nine, ten, and that's quite again takes its toll on your static leg, doesn't it? If you can't do the ten, absolutely fine. If you need to hold on, absolutely fine. Practice makes perfect. So this is an e this is not an easy class. It's a challenging class, but doable. So exhale, navel into your backbone. Engage your core, release it slightly, and we're going up on this one. So it's 12, 9, 6, isn't it? Oh, sorry. <laughs> See, I need the balance as well. I'm, my balance is not brilliant. Three, four, five. If you're doing the stamping one, Six. The point is to do it fast. Oh, oh, oh. Hang on. Let me get my balance again. Seven. Eight. Nine. 
10. Ooh. How was that? Give me feedback on it, see what you think. <sighs> right, we're going to do the abs now. So you need to sit sideways in your chair. And you need to be positioned so that your feet are comfortably flat on the floor. And so obviously if you're shorter, you move further to further forward. If you're taller, you can be further back. We're going to sit up nice and straight and have your hands on your knees so that your middle finger, excuse me, is just at the top of your kneecap, at the top of your patella. And then you're going to lean back slightly so that your middle finger is now about an inch above your kneecap. And then you're going to push your, your shoulder, you're going to leave your back where it is, but push your shoulders forward. Does that sound ridiculous? And then we're just going to lift your knees. Two, three. What you could try and do, four, is try and get them to your elbow. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. And that should you should feel that there because you're back and you're lifting your knee up. Bringing it. If you can bring it to your elbow, you don't have to. And then sitting up again, we're going to do it again. Uh, middle finger on your patella at the top of your kneecap. Lean back so it's about an inch back. Shoulders forward so that your shoulders are rounded. Puts less strain on your back if you do that. And we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think my counting's a bit erratic here. <coughs> Eight, nine, ten. Oh, I felt it that time. Um, right. We're going to do an upward row. If you have, um, if you haven't got a band, this one doesn't matter so much for this one. I think sometimes think uh, doesn't mean to say she can do squats properly. Um, I sometimes think this might be easier if you're new to this without a band. The way to do it is to just hold your thumb of one hand, just so your hands don't ping apart. That's all. And what we're doing is we're raising our arms, but by the elbow. So the object of the exercise is not to get this to your chin. It's just the object of the, if you can get them up there, that's fine. But your elbows must stay higher. So if you can only get to there, that's fine. I know people with limited shoulder mobility and not very strong muscles here struggle. And I've seen people going like this. No, it doesn't matter where your, are, your hands are, as long as your elbows are higher. If you're going to do, stand on your band. This is why it's good to have a two meter band. Cross them over. If you've got a short band, it's not quite as good. And then I'll come forward. Your hands are like this. Are you ready? We're going to start. And nice and straight. Don't rock. It's only your arms that move. One. Two. Three. Four. This is a hard one, I think. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Whoa, well done. That, uh, that, that is not an easy one. Right, as you know, those are the regulars. <laughs> um, we're going to do another ten squats. 
or another 10 stand-ups from the chair or another three stand-ups from the chair, however many you do. Okay, you can mix and match. You might want to do a couple of squats and then do the rest in the chair. So it's entirely up to you. You know your own capability. But just push yourself a little bit. So we're going to just do 10. Enough talking. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. When these get easy, six. You can either do them with weights. Seven. You can actually do them with a band as well. Eight. I think I seem to have done eight twice. Nine. Oh, ten. Well done. Even though I think we probably did eleven. Oh, right. Last one before we go into our little routines. Ah, as you know, this is the one I dread most. So we're going to do side bends. So you need your feet at least hip width apart. I find the wider your feet are apart, the easier the exercise. Ah, so if you're going, you bend to the side, not forward or back, just to the side. If you're going to put your hand over your head and you don't have to, you can just do it like this. Keep it straight so that you're actually using the muscles. It's not just inert, it's doing something. So this is counting as one because I'm not going to do another one. So that's one. Don't do them too fast because when you've been leaning to the side, there's a tendency to make you a bit dizzy when you stand up. <laughs> Two. This is really good for your core. <laughs> Three. It's good for your flexibility as well, actually. Four. But I don't like doing them. Five. It's not too bad today, actually. Maybe I'm getting, maybe after a year, I'm getting better at them. Six. We've been doing these nearly a year. Seven. Have you all had your jabs? Eight. Nine. Ten. That's the topic of conversation these days, isn't it? If you had your jab, what did you have? Oh, I had the AstraZeneca. One. Two, three, four, five, <coughs> five <coughs> six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. Well done. Right. Remember this. We're going to do this heel dig, side, back. Because the toe tap, because the side bends, the last few exercises have been a little bit static, squats aren't I suppose, we're just going to warm you up a little bit for the, um, the stretching, plus it's a bit of fun, toe tap, last one at this speed, heel dig, side, back, toe tap, right, uh, what I used to do, well what I did twice, till I got nabbed by the uh, performing Rights Society is play some music. So we did this to music, but I can't do that now. So I have to have music in my head. You can have actual music on if you want, but you'll probably be doing it at a different tempo from me. <clears throat> but that's okay. You can shut your eyes and just do it. So pretend uh, 
pretend you've got music, pretend there's music playing, and we're going to go heel dig. Side. If you're floundering, just try and keep up. It will come eventually. Heel dig. Side. Back. Toe tap. 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 One more time. Heel dig. Side. Back. Toe tap. How did that go? Because you managed to keep up Were you floundering a bit. It doesn't matter. It's just that they, it's really good for your memory. Um, never mind all this brain training with uh, crossword puzzles and things. It's been shown that if you actually do physical activity and you have to remember it, it that's better for your brain than it is for than just doing crosswords and puzzles. If you were doing crosswords, I suppose, and running at the same time, it might be better. But because of this, you have to think, you have to remember what you're doing, and it does help your brain. Right. Before we go into the stretching, as usual, we're going to do three 20-second bouts of high-intensity exercise. Now, that can be the best one is just tiny little steps, tiny little running steps. If you've got bad knees or anything, then this probably isn't for you. But as fast as you can, not big steps, just tiny little ones, using your arms, not hunching your shoulders. But if you've got bad knees, or maybe once was enough, and you want to do have a bit of a rest, the other two, although obviously I disapprove of that, you can do punching. So have your, take a boxer stance, bend your knees, and you're going to take your hands from here and they're just going to go straight out. You're just going to do this for the 20 seconds. OK, the reason that you do it with your the reason it's better with running is because your muscles are bigger in your legs. And so your heart needs to work a bit faster to get the oxygen to them. But they makes you quite puffed doing that as well. Right. So, like I say, you can mix and match if you want. Uh, so what am I doing? Oh, yes, I need my stopwatch. Are you ready? On your marks, set, go. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. There we go. Yes, um, somebody asked me today about how they found out about how they got onto the live class. And of course, I, I hadn't really, I didn't really know because um, I've always been this side of the camera. So what I did was I went onto my, well, I mean, if you follow the link, it'll take you to my YouTube channel. Channel, it sounds very grand, doesn't it? Uh, but um, I can't do that on my computer because I'm logged in and it always takes me to me. Um, so I went on, on my telly, on my smart telly, and went on to YouTube, just did a search for Rosemary Malice over 50 fitness, and I popped up, and then I saw a little square saying uh, upcoming event, which was me, which I thought was wonderful. Uh, So that's how you find me on the telly. And I presume if you go on to YouTube, it says upcoming event as well. Right. I can't, I can't, um, I can't message with you at the moment, Delia. Right. Second one on your marks. Set. Off you go. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Well done. Yes, the smart TV is easy to find me, but if you keep, if you if you uh, keep the link, if you if you save me, if you're doing it on a laptop or anything, if you save me in your favourites and just click on that, then my channel comes up. I used to have two channels for some reason, but um, I closed down the other one because it was a bit confusing. 
very confusing. There's also a rosemary at over 50. Oh, no, I think that might be my old one. It's not 550 because that still pops up, but there's nothing on there. It's 50 F I F T Y. Right, this is going to be the last one in a moment. I'll give you a little bit of time to recover. Okay, you ready? On your marks, set, off you go. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. How was that? Right, just before we go into the stretches, as usual, uh, just a few announcements. If you uh, if you want to find out more about fitness, there's my Over 50 Fitness Facebook page, fa, 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 uh, which is in the comment section below the video, under there. Um, and if you've enjoyed the class, you can show your appreciation by clicking on the buy me a coffee link and buying me a coffee. But there's no obligation to do that. It's that's that's entirely voluntary. Um, and if you could, if you like it, you could subscribe. Uh, it's easier to find me if you subscribed, because if you go on YouTube and click subscriptions, it'll bring up all the channels that you subscribe to. And somebody actually has an alert on it so that uh, when I'm coming up, when I'm coming on the on the on deli, um, they get an alarm. So there's various ways to do it. Anyway, uh, yes. So if you could click subscribe or and like this class, that would be quite nice as well, because then other people see it and they see there's a few likes and they think, oh, that must be quite a good class. And that way I can grow the number of people that know about me, because my mission is to get the whole world of older people fit. Uh, particularly, I think we're noticing now how important it is to be fit with COVID because people who are not fit have a worse prognosis than people who are fit. Um, just throwing that in there at the end of the session. Uh, so we'll go into the stretching now. I'm just going to pull this down a wee bit. Hello, baby. My dog's still lame. I'm still having to walk him sedately, which is driving us both mad. Come on, my baby boy. He's, he's lamest when he's been sleeping uh, and his leg stiffens up. Once, he's get, once he gets going, his leg's fine. Anyway, hello. Better put this up a wee bit. So we're going to do a calf stretch to begin with. So holding the back of the chair, front leg bent, back leg straight, heel on the ground, both heels on the ground, in fact, and then lean forward. You should feel the stretch at the back of your, at the top of your calf on the, on the straight leg. We'll hold that for a couple of seconds. And then we're gently going to bend the back knee, put a little bit of weight on that foot, and you'll find the stretch moving down into the Achilles. And then switch legs. Just have a check to make sure both feet are pointing in the same direction. And then bend your back knee. There we go. Right, we're going to stretch the quadriceps, these big muscles here. If you can, grab your, your foot or your ankle or your trouser leg. And we're standing up straight. You can use it as more practice for balance if you want. Keep your knees together. If you can't do that, excuse me, I've got a wedgie here. If you can't do that, have your hands behind you and just kick your legs up and see if you can bash your hands with your heels but it doesn't matter if you can only do it to there that's fine you're still you're still stretching these muscles i'm going to just do some static stretching those of you that are moving which is called dynamic stretching you just keep being dynamic and like i say i'm trying to really trying hard to improve my balance at the moment because it's <laughs> Right, we'll stretch on the other leg now. Those of you that are doing static stretches, switch legs. Those of you that are doing dynamic stretching, just keep being so, as dynamic. Right, 
Okay. Uh, we're going to do hamstrings now, which are these big muscles on the back of your legs. So sitting at the front of the chair, knees at 90 degrees, ankles under your knees, sitting up nice and straight. Put one leg forward, toe pulled back, and sitting up, lean forward from the hips, not from the waist. Now remember, this is your stretching. Just do what is good for you. The stretching should be challenging, but never painful. If it's painful, you know, if you're doing this, ow, 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 just move up a bit. No point in torturing yourself. And then sitting up. Other leg, uh, sitting up nice and straight, lean forward from the hips, not from the waist. And sitting up. Last one, concentrating on the legs. Sit sideways in your chair but to the front of the chair, not sort of like this. You need to be almost one cheek on the chair and this leg stretches out behind you. Your torso is upright and you're getting as, if you can't bring the leg right back, that's fine, as long as you get a stretch here. If you lean back a bit, you'll get a stretch. So trying to stretch the hip flexors, stretch these ones. So, because if you're sitting at a computer all the time or if you're sitting, these ones, these get tight and you get forward and you get that old person gait. It's a bit like water gait, but it's old person gait. Rather than striding out. And then switch around. And back. It's nice being able to say water gait and things. And everybody knows what I'm talking about because we all remember it. Okie dokie, standing up, have your, have your hands out at um, shoulder height, your arms at shoulder height, hands, palms facing forwards, and you're going round a tree, so it's not like that, it's round like that, but at shoulder height, and then dip your head, so that you're stretching out those muscles at the back, because those are the ones that you were using when you were doing that upward row that we did. With the elbow one. We want to try and straighten those. See if you can get your shoulder blades apart. Also, you're using those muscles when you were rowing, doing the seated row. And then, if you can, put your hands behind, interlink your fingers behind your back. If you can't, just try and get your elbows together. And then lift your hands if you can. Just to get a stretch across your chest, just by, by pulling your hands back, you still get the same stretch. It's just a bit, keeps your hands together if you do it this way. Okay, right. Sitting down. Remember, when you're sitting down, don't, just sitting comfortably, but don't use the back to support yourself. Use your own muscles to support yourself. And just going to dip your head. Put your hand on your crown. Don't push, but just let the weight of your hand push your head down slightly. Just so there's a bit of weight on your head. And then look up. <coughs> and then you're going to turn your head, just your head, not your shoulders, to the left as far as it will go and then put your right hand on the right hand side of your face and try and turn your head to the center really really try and turn it back and create tension in your neck by doing that and then release the tension and see if you can turn your head slightly more to the left hold it there for a couple of seconds and then bring it slowly back to the front and then turn it to the right your hand on your chin, the left hand on the left hand side of your chin. Try and turn your head back to the center. Resist with this hand. 
create that tension in your neck and then release it and see if you can turn your head slightly more to the right. I'm sure my neck is loosening. I'm sure I can turn my head more than I used to. And then bring it back to the center. And there we go. Another day gone. So. <laughs> Thanks, Nikki. Um, uh, you mean hip running? Yeah, you don't have to coordinate your well. Some people, some people, Delia, just let me show you. Some people that I knew used to do this when I ran a class, you know, when there was actual people there, when they were doing this hit stuff. They used to just do this with their arms and they just found it quite good. Just legs going as fast as they can and their arms used to do that. So if you want to do that, it looks quite graceful. Uh, yeah, it is difficult to get your arms going at that speed. I, I, I take your point on that. Uh, I remember Watergate so well. <laughs> uh, thanks. Right. Thank you very much. And for those of you that do the um, strength class on a Monday, I'll see you then. If any of you haven't done the strength class and would like to give it a go, you do need to be able to get up and down off the floor. Not up and down and up and down. Half the class is done standing up and the other half is on the floor. Uh, apparently, it's quite a lot harder than this class. So I am reliably informed, but it's still doable. You don't have to do all the exercises. Anyway, thank you very much for joining today. Uh, any questions, get in touch with me via my Facebook page. And bye-bye.